This key concept video looks at the topic of correlation between two variables. And this fits under the larger topic of statistical application. And in this video, I'm gonna briefly talk about plotting variables onto a scatter diagram, and also how to describe the correlation between the two variables. So correlation meaning as say one variable increases, what does the other variable do? Does it also increase? Does it decrease? Or does it not change at all? Does it have no impact? Um, so I recommend, this is a very important topic. It appears in pretty much every single IBMS studies exam. So I recommend looking at this video and then maybe the next video, which is how to find the line of regression equation and then going practicing some of these questions in the question bank section. Okay, so first things first, I have an example scatter diagram here in table values. Uh, so this particular example looks at the number of ice cream sold per day for a given temperature. And as we could probably predict or guess, as the temperature increases, so on our table here, the temperature increases, the number of ice creams also increases. And you would expect that. People usually have ice creams to cool down. So as, and to, to visualize this on the scatter diagram, as the temperature increases, the number of ice creams also increases. Now, how to actually talk about this using statistics um, language, as one variable increases, so as the temperature increases, so does the number of ice creams. So there is a correlation between the variables, and you can therefore see that with our data points. We can pretty much draw a line over it. Uh, an example where variables aren't correlated would be if the data points look like this, so there's no correlation or link between an increase in one variable and an increase in the other or decrease in the other. So let's, let's talk about how we would describe these using these six example scatter diagrams on the right hand side here. These top three, you'll notice that as one variable increases, the other variable also increases. Same as this one here, as one variable increases, so does the other. And this one here, these two, all three are all that type of case and the line of best fit which is the line that you put over the data points is all going upwards now for these we call positive positive correlation in other words as one variable increases so does the other conversely to that these ones down here these bottom three as one variable increases the other variable actually decreases. So our first data point is here. The next one increases on the horizontal axis to get to this point here, but actually decreases on the vertical axis. That's the same for these three here. And these are called negative correlation. Uh, an example of negative correlation would be the temperature of the day and maybe the number of hot chocolates sold so as the temperature increases, the number of hot chocolates, which people don't really drink on a hot day, will, will decrease. However, when the temperature is right at the start here, the origin or zero, the number of hot chocolates will be very high. So that's an example of negative correlation. Okay, so we've talked about the direction, positive or negative. Let's now talk about the strength of the correlation. Let's use this example here, this top left one. Notice how all of the data points are very, very close to the line of best fit, or this arrow here that's called the line of best fit. They're very, very close, and we can describe this using the word strong. And putting these two together, this will be strong positive correlation to describe this one here. This next one, the data points aren't as close to the line of best fit. We would we will use the word moderate. And again, combining these two, this will be moderate positive correlation to describe this particular data set here. And for this one here, the data points are quite a long way away from the line of best fit. The line of best fit doesn't, isn't really close to all of them. We would call this weak. And combining these two would be weak positive correlation. And exactly the same three words for negative correlation. So the data points are very close to this line of best fit, so this will be strong. This one here will be moderate, and this one here will be weak. Now the question that you may be thinking right now, and it's a very good question, is well, how do I know whether it's strong or moderate? 
What if a graph looks kind of in the middle of the two? Well, that's where we use the value, the, uh, the value R, which we're gonna call correlation. And we're gonna talk about this in the next key concept video as to how to actually calculate R. And we're gonna get a R value using our graphics calculator. And R values, there, there are different schools of thought. However, the numbers that I like to use is between 0 0.85 and 1, 1.0. 1, 1 is the strongest you can have. That's, that's a perfect correlation. That is strong. Between 0 0.5 and 0 0.85 is moderate. And from 0 0.1 to 0 0.5 is weak. And if you have a value less than 0.1, you could say, well, there's no correlation. So for example, if we got an R value of 0 0.86, that would look kind of in the middle of strong and moderate correlation, but because it's higher than 0.85, I would call it strong positive correlation. And the same values here for the negative correlation. So 0 0.85 to 1, 0 0.5 to 0 0.85, and 0 0.1 to 0 0.5. Okay, so there's a brief overview as to what correlation means. Basically, it's how close the line of best fit is to the data points and how to describe it. In the next video, we're going to look at calculating the line of regression equation and the correlation value R.